couple of weeks ago, I made a film about supermarket independence. In that, I mentioned that we grind our own flour and make our own bread from it. And there was some comments expressing interest in that grinding process and also the bread making. So today I thought I'd take you through the process, show you how we make our bread, and also let you have a little bit of a look at the grinder and talk to you about it. Now, in terms of our bread making, we do use a bread machine. Now, there's nothing greatly remarkable about bread machine bread in itself. Our recipe is slightly different, I suppose, from most people in that we tend to make a fully stone ground wholemeal loaf and it's made with freshly ground flour. If you're interested in making bread by hand without bread machines, I do have, and I'll put a link to it, a film that was made by my father over 50 years ago about making bread by hand. So that's of historical interest and also of interest if you are wanting to make bread by hand, there's quite a lot of detail in that film. Though, as I said, it is quite old, it was made before modern video technology. Now, the first thing that we do in making bread is to go and grind the flour. Now, to make the loaf size that we have, which is a 750 gram loaf, we start by grinding just over two cups of wheat. We buy biodynamic wheat in bulk and Wheat stores a lot better than flour, and flour, of course, a lot better than bread. So storing wheat is the best way to store your food. So while the flour is grinding, we can actually get started in the process and start the other ingredients into the bread bowl. Now, as I said, this is a 750 gram bread machine. The recipe that we use calls for one and a half cups of water into this. This is a 240 ml cup, so there's around 360 to maybe 370 mils of water going into there. You need to be fairly precise with the water flour balance. So you need to be quite careful. There's a little bit of leeway, but not a lot. Otherwise your loaf is going to be quite different. The next thing that I'm adding is a teaspoon of salt. Now this is Himalayan salt but use whatever your salt you like. A teaspoon for this is a fairly light salt uh, content, but you can vary it. You can even make it without salt if you like. The next one is bread improver. Now, not everybody likes to use bread improver. It basically is amylase, an enzyme, along with a little gluten in there. Using bread improver, I find, does produce a better, uh, more risen loaf. Without it, it's going to be a little bit more dense. So it's up to your choice whether you use that or not. It's not going to make huge differences, but I notice it more in winter when it's cooler, like the moment that the bread improver really helps. The third ingredient, or fourth ingredient going in, really, if we're counting the water, is some jaggery. Now, this is basically dried sugar cane juice, so you could call it sugar, and if you haven't got jaggery, you can utilize sugar or honey. I've used a tablespoon of that into there. With jaggery, you have a little bit of a molasses type flavor coming in, and that improves or creates a different bread flavor. The next ingredient we use in it is some milk powder and we use two tablespoons of milk powder in there. Just makes a little smoother and softer loaf. Again, not an absolute necessary ingredient. The last ingredient I'm going to put directly into here is some olive oil and we use two tablespoons of that in there. Be easier to pour out of a smaller container, but it's quicker to use this. So now that the wheat has finished grinding, we're ready to work with the flours. So I've got here the 
flour that's been ground, and freshly ground flour is warm. Bread machines on a wholemeal mix often try and warm the ingredients to give a better rise, but when you're using freshly ground flour, it's already warm, and so you don't need to use the wholemeal cycle. You can work with the basic cycle, which is a little bit quicker. To get things precise, you actually need to weigh your flour. Rather than using a volume uh, measure, which can be inaccurate, weighing it is far better. So, so this is within the ballpark weight that I need. Now, the target weight for the flour is 440 grams. I could accept some variation up to 450, but you can't accept much more than that. I have a weight that I know that includes the bowl and that makes it really easy to work with. To the flour, before I put it in, I'm going to add two tablespoons of gluten flour. Now, I do that because the wheat that we have, the biodynamic wheat, is a little bit low in gluten and adding that bit extra gluten means that your bread rises better and isn't as crumbly. The other thing that I like to add to bread and I think makes a smoother, uh, softer loaf is some linseed. And I put three tablespoons of linseed into it. Linseed has, has that mucilaginous nature and it just makes a smoother loaf. Helps hold it together a little bit too so that it's it's nicer when you cut it and eating it. Yeast, we also need to add. Now I generally put that on the very top, so I'll put this flour mix in with the liquids. So we've got that in there and I add two teaspoons of dried yeast. Now, dried yeast, of course, is a supermarket product. Could we make bread without it? Yes, we could. You could make sourdough breads creating your own yeast. But with bread machines and fixed cycles, this is much easier. To make a sourdough bread, it's better to do it by hand. Though you can with some bread machines, you can get it to work. Okay, this is now ready to go into the machine. So that'll go on to a basic cycle, and that's around about three and a quarter hours. Now, our power is off-grid solar. Now, a lot of people may be interested in the fact that we are making this bread with a bread machine on solar power. Yes, you can do it. How much power does it use? Well, probably in the region of around about 700 watt hours. I haven't really got a precise measurement but from what I have seen and the impact on our batteries, it's around that region. The best time of day to do it, obviously, is when the batteries have been filled already in the morning and then you've got bonus sunshine. So you're actually using the sunshine directly to run your bread machine, not drawing it from your batteries. But I'll talk about the solar power more in another video specifically about solar. While it's baking, we'll go and have a look at the grinder and talk about that some more. Now, this mill is a survival arc grain mill, and I'll put a link in the description where you can purchase these if you are interested. They come as a basic unit, which is hand operated, with both stone grinding and also metal burrs so that you can utilize either that will quickly change over or reasonably quickly change over depending what you want to do. I use the stones uh, because I prefer that with wheat but for other things when you're working with something like chickpeas then the metal I usually find is better. You can also utilize them with the metal to make nut butters if you wanted to but you would have to clean them well afterwards. Now I purchased a motorization kit with this, which was the pulley, uh, the belt, and the pulley for the motor. And I purchased a motor separately and fitted these together. 
Now, originally I had a smaller motor, which was I think a one third horsepower, and it worked, but occasionally struggled with some of the harder grains. I have changed that now to a half horsepower motor, and it powers through pretty much anything. It does a really good job. Motorization puts a little bit of extra stress on the bush in here and probably wears it a bit faster. However, it's a lot easier and quicker than doing it by hand and with solar power, you might as well do that. It only takes around about five minutes to grind the flour that we need for a loaf of bread, maybe less. And while you're actually putting the other ingredients in as we did, this will grind the flour and then it's ready. Having a mill of this type or any type really, if you are wanting to make your own bread and buy wheat instead of buying flour, so if you've got something that will store is absolutely essential. I know there are some people that store lots of wheat and think that they'll do this in an emergency situation, but I think it's better to incorporate it into everyday life. That way, you simply know what's doing and you know that it actually works. Now I chose a mill that was a hand mill and motorized it because I wanted the ability to be able to go back to hand operation if that was ever necessary. However, you know, there are pure electric mills available and they work quite well. Some dearer than this, some cheaper. You simply are going to need to look and make your own choices. Now that the bread is finished, we can get it out. And this is the loaf as it baked. So it's good to turn it out, let it cool. Now, bread machines don't turn out the best looking loaf. This one is done quite well, but sometimes they can be a little bit rough. If you want to make really nice looking loaves, you do have to make them by hand. So if you're interested in that, as I said earlier, go and have a look at that film of my father's that's from over 50 years ago at how to make bread by hand and make loaves that look really nice. If you're interested in making this loaf and want to try it, I'll put the recipe in the description below. The nice thing about baking this time of the day during the sunlight hours after the batteries are filled is that the power that actually baked this bread has basically been for free in terms of our batteries are full and this is excess power that if we didn't make this bread it actually wouldn't be put to use. The other good thing about bread machine baking is that you can go and do other things. While this has been baking I've been outside pruning fruit trees and I'll be back soon with another video. Next video will be about our off-grid solar power so if you're interested in that keep an eye out for it thanks for watching